of the advanced top wizard. Um, what I've done is just created a wizard for this particular profile. Um, and I've, I've got some um, uh, information icons here. So what we can do is tap those icons and it can give you some information um, of, of what those settings will do. So for instance, here, a higher temperature can help um, extract more soluble compounds. However, it can also increase the harshness taste of the coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so my idea here is um, I've simplified, this is an advanced profile, um, but I've simplified the steps that I feel make a difference for this profile that, like a, that a user would adjust to make a difference. So uh, temperature is one variable you adjust and, and you can, I think we can all agree that um, um, you can reduce temperature to reduce harshness in the, in the coffee taste. Um, I think that's pretty common. So a lot of coffee that might have um, some bitterness or astringency, um, if you reduce the temperature, you can often reduce that harshness and astringency. Um, now, just on that point, my, my opinion there might be different to somebody else's, but we can come to um, a consensus of opinion and use that for the information. Um, so we can adjust that information later. And the same for the next step here. So basically, I'll just explain this profile quickly. It's a three stage profile, a three step advanced profile. We've got a fill, which just fills as rapidly as it can. It's just a, um, just a pressure step. Um, and then we've got a, a blooming stage or a soaking stage. It's like a, a pre-infusion stage. And I just hold that at three bar. And then I've got the pour stage. Um, now the pour stage is what you guys have been talking about with a limit. So this is a flow step, flow profile. And it's just got a, an eight and a half bar limit. And by having that step with a, a flow profile and a limit, um, whatever happens, doesn't matter if you grind too fine or too coarse, your pressure is not going to go over that maximum limit and your flow is not going to go over that maximum step. So it's really easy to control, particularly for somebody new, because you can um, start with a fine grind or a coarse grind and you'll, you'll still get a decent shot. You'll have the same extraction yield because we're using flow. So the extraction yield is going to be the same regardless of whether you choke it or not. Um, and, and if you're too coarse, it's just going to put, be a really short time, uh, but you're still going to get the same, same shot. And, and you'll find that um, uh, I haven't found a shot that I wouldn't drink. Um, you know, you can dial in and get a nice shot, really good shot, but it's sort of don't weigh shots. So we'll get back to here. Um, the explanation here for the pre-infusion time now, um, John, this is where you put the uh, advanced weight in the profile step. Um, and I use that for this profile. Um, so what I found with moving on at weight is um, you can set the first drops, we can set a, a move on at weight at say 0.5 or 0.3 of a gram. And that's basically the first few drops that go in the cup will trigger um, that, that low weight and we can move on. Or we can extend that, extend that to a, a larger weight in the cup. So I've got four gram here. Um, and that gives you more of that um, uh, londinium type um, thickness to the copy. Um, whereas if I moved on at say, um, at, at the very first drops, you get more of that um, more wine, like a less, less thickness, but you get more clarity. Um, and the same thing applies when you go past four gram, not so much four gram, but when you get up to about uh, 10, 12 gram, depending on the ratio of your shot, of course, um, you start going back the other way as well. Um, and what I've found is um, with some of the, particularly with light roast, um, sometimes it's advantageous to go on the longer side. So you, you hold that three bar for a long time and you get a big uh, percentage of your shot in three bar then you spike up and then and the pressure will drop off really quickly. And you can get um, what I like to describe as a high TDS taste. Like it, it tastes like a high consistency, but you don't have that um, more, with the, with the shorter time you get high consistency, but it's more chocolatey thick syrupy. Whereas the other consistency, I think it's because more so because you've got a higher percentage of low pressure, you get more of a, a like a full wine type consistency. Um, so anyway, I try to explain some of that stuff in, um, in these um, cues here. So the beginner can have a look here and read what this part of the profile is gonna do. Um, and 
the same with here with the with the poor limits. It explains what the what I've just tried to explain here with how these limits work, um, and also with the um, extraction ratio. So for me, extraction ratio is a big part of moving from um, a shop that's sour into uh, bitter, and through and on that path you go through sweetness. Um, so light roasts are, are generally um, more sour, they're more acidic, and that gives them a, a sour um, sensation. And if you extract longer, um, you can start moving from sour to, towards sweet. Um, and then of course you can go too far and it starts becoming bitter. And, and that's an easy adjustment you can do with, um, with the extraction ratio. And of course, the, what, what you do here with your profile can alter that as well. So um, if I extract the fast flow, um, I might I might want a, a different extraction ratio it might be ideal uh, for for a different flow rate. But um, anyway, what the points I'm trying to get at here is we could, some of these things we can all agree on, um, or we can come to a consensus of the simple things that can help people learn how to adjust their profile. Um, so um, you know, for a beginner that comes in, they can. Like they pour the shot and they can look at it and they go, well, that was a bit sour. Um, what can I do to improve that sourness? And they can look here and they go, well, we could extract that longer. They might have been, they might have done a, a one to 1.8 extraction ratio and they could try going a bit longer or they could look at this, what the temperature does. Um, so the, the shot would taste a bit bitter, it was harsh. Um, or maybe they can, they can try reducing the temperature. Um, from here, we can also start giving them cue points. So um, we could look at this graph when, when they've pulled the shot. We could look at their last graph um, and put up their last graph here and go, okay, well, your temperature was quite high. And we could say, um, was your, we could ask, was the shot bitter? Was the shot, um, um, did it taste weak? Um, and, and give suggestions on, on on that. So they, it'd be like a flow chart. Um, and we can base those questions on what their graph was like. So if the graph uh, didn't reach pressure here, um, we could say, was you, did you um, shot taste thin? Did it taste watery? Um, and, and we could say then maybe grind a bit finer to get that pressure up. Um, or did the, was the, did the shot not have clarity? Was it a muddled, muddy type taste? Then we might reduce the pressure down to a six bar lever type shot. Um, so I, th I think we've got scope here that there's, there's certain variables that we can all agree on. It, it doesn't have to be um, a taste preference. It can be more what the person's tasting and the, and the direction they want to go. And we can, we can cue a suggestion towards that direction. Um, so anyway, that's, that's just my thoughts there. Uh, thanks, Damien. While you're while you're here, uh, Luca, I'm not sure if he saw his comments. So he basically said we need to actually do the pressure versus flow investigation with some structured blind tastings, and then later said I agree, but my goal is not to get that chocolate in light roast. If users can understand this and make their own informed choice, it's great. Yeah, for sure. So Luca and I, we 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 like our espresso different. Um, so if I was to pull a shot for uh, Luca with using this profile, um, I would go to say my pressure limits here and I would reduce my pressure limit to say seven bar. Um, and I would increase my flow, you know, maybe two and a half mils, maybe then three mil. Um, and I'd use a light bean and um, that would give me a shot that I, would interpret that uh, Luca would like um, for a shot that I would like, and most of my shots go into milk, so um, I chase things a little bit different. Um, I generally like to get up to nine bar pressure. Um, the reason I said eight and a half here is because of the uh, flow limit. Um, the flow limit setting I use, uh, sorry, the pressure limit setting I use is uh, 0.2 bar, um, and if I've got this limit set at 8.5, that means um, the shot might go up to 8.7, but it, it might even go up to um, like 8.8, 8.9. 8 
Um, but it keeps it below nine bar. I think nine bar, above nine bar starts to get a bit, uh, gets a bit harsh. You start losing um, some of the fruity notes when you get above that um, and, and you bring out a bit of harshness. So I like to sit around there, but um, I, I haven't really seen much of Lucas Grass, but I wouldn't mind betting that a lot of his shots are um, maybe sub seven bar type shots. Um, and he's, would that be right, Luca? Would you, and you probably decline a lot. You don't do so much uh, constant pressure. Would that be correct or, or not? I mean, he um, actually. Hi. Uh, oh, sorry. Hi, hi guys. guys. Sorry, uh, I've I've just uh, I've just been coming back into my apartment from uh, getting some groceries whilst I've been listening. Um, yet, yeah, Damien, I'm I'm actually um, using a profile at the moment that. Um, I think it starts off at about um, after pre-infusion. It's sort of it's a pressure profile. It starts at about uh, eight and a half, nine bar, and then it sort of declines down to about six or seven. But often the extraction will flow quickly and be done um, before it gets down there. So I'm I'm going um, a little bit higher. Um, I yeah. suppose that, um, but but I, I agree with your approach utterly about you know, tw tweaking all of the variables and understanding what does what. And the difference is perhaps that um, as like, I mean, as you know, I use, I'm using some light roasts that are very, very light and it is very hard to get much harshness out of them at all, no matter how hard your extraction conditions are because they are very, very light. So that might, might be some of the difference. And maybe if you had something that was, a, a notch a little bit darker, then maybe you would you would need to go a, a little bit lower in pressure. Yeah, for sure. If if you've got any roast defects, uh, lowering the pressure helps reduce them. If you get a really good bean and it's been roasted well, um, you can extract it as eleven bar, and you won't get any of that harshness. It, it's, um, the bean's got a lot to do with it. And, and I, I appreciate what you're saying there with your lighter roast and a good bean. Um, you know, nine bars okay. But one of the things you did mention there was the, the higher flow rate. And I think that's pretty consistent with um, people that are extracting lighter beans generally use a, a, a faster flow. Um, a, a simple test that you could, anyone can do at home is just set up a profile like this and um, change the setting here uh, to 1.6 mil and then pull another shot, say two mil or 2.2 mil and taste the difference. And you'll find that 1.7 is that thick chocolatey taste. Um, the two mil will taste, um, it'll be lower in body, but it'll be uh, more clarity in the, in the, um, in the fruity and the taste of the beans, like the origin taste of the beans. Um, and that's just one little simple setting you can change. Um, it, when, you, when you go fast, it's gonna affect the pressure. So when you set this flow rate to 2.2 mil, you're going to be pretty well stuck on the on the pressure limit, as opposed to the slower rate, you might not reach the pressure there. So um, with the slower rate, you, you could grind a bit finer if you want to maintain the pressure. Um, but it, it's a good experiment to do, and you just um, that's basically what I do is I try and buy beans that other guys are buying and try and understand what they're liking. Um, and then I just vary one variable at a time, like, like that flow step here, um, or I might leave that the same and change this extraction ratio and just see what it does. And you have a look at what graphs other people are putting up um, and, and the type of thing they like and, and try and pick up trends. And I think we can, I think we've been going out long enough now that there's certain things that we, we can say that are consistent regardless of um, the type of shot that you like. Um, that we can guide people to to certain settings or, or certain shift to certain ranges of settings and stuff. Uh, Damien, I just wanted to give you some of my thoughts on this. I mean, first of all, um, this is a really great expression. I don't know if you got this idea on your own or from discussions. Um, I had mentioned a while ago that I wanted to see in the future recipes that had their own user interface controls that were that with a user interface was specific to that recipe. And, and this is a brilliant version of that. And, you know, and you've coded and I haven't. So fantastic. Well done there. Um, 
the um, the thing I would myself had added I have added to this that what I had in my mind was a light to dark rose slider that affected a number of things. So basically, it was like a wizard that changed a number of things. Uh, you, you can go back to, uh, you don't have to spotlight me, Mohammed. I'm, I'm fine spotlighting this user interface because I'm going to talk about it. Um, and so with a light roast, generally looking at this, this is really simplified things, which I love. With a light roast, I would increase the temperatures of the shot up to 94 Celsius. And with a dark roast, I'd come down to 88. Um, with a light roast, I would increase the time, I call it the dripping stage, um, but it's the second half of your infusion. Okay. Um, I would, so dark roasts will tend to have a very short dripping stage, like just five seconds. And the ultra light is going to look more like blooming. So it might be out all the way out to 30 seconds of dripping. Um, the other thing I would do is with dripping, uh, the dripping stage is that light beans, if you hold three bar, tend to after like 10 seconds start to drip really considerably um and with londinium you hold pressure with blooming uh rayo's shot hits typically five bars and then doesn't add any more water and i think that what blooming is doing works really well with very light beans because then it we don't get that really intense dripping as the the pre-infusion lasts a long time so as they went ultra light i would um, make the end of the dripping stage have a sharp pressure decrease. So starting at three bar, ending all the way down to zero bar at the end of the dripping stage. Um, and then finally, uh, the flow rate is going to increase. Actually, it's not finally yet. The flow rate is going to increase as you go lighter, and it's going to decrease as you go darker with something around three, three and a half mils per second being not unusual for um, ultralight. You're, you're going into Allonger land. Um, and then finally, the extraction ratio changing. So an, uh, an ultra dark roast being a typically one to two and very thick shot. And then more like one to 2.8, one to three with an ultralight. So to, to summarize all that, a dark bean is going to be a lower temperature with um, less dripping time lower flow rate and a lower extraction. A light bean is going to be higher temperature, longer dripping with the dripping pressure decreasing, uh, probably a bit more tolerant on the weight exit on the dripping. So going all the way to 10 grams instead of four grams. Um, and a flow aiming for something like three mils per second and a longer extraction ratio. Um, the, go the goal there for me was so that um, someone doesn't have to master all those parameters as they move between roast levels. Um, we make the suggestions and and then they tweak. Then they, then, then they, they start to mess with the flow rate and such. Um, and then there's one last thing, which is um, just changing that flow rate is not going to actually necessarily hit it. They're going to have to go coarser as well. So as they increase that flow rate, if they don't change the grind, they won't necessarily get the effect they want. Uh, so th that's just my, my thought on that. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, increasing the well, flow rate, you need to go coarser um, because you're going to hit that pressure mm. uh, a lot quicker, easier. Um, also extending this weight stage here or, or this blooming time that you're talking about, um, you're saying you're getting uh, 10 grams or so with with, uh, with, the, with your blooming step. Um, mm -hmm. the, the more weight you add here, um, mm -hmm. the less pressure you're gonna, you're gonna reach. Um, so your puck becomes less resistant the longer you bloom for. Well, what happens with the lights is that, I mean, blooming has the finest grind um, and um, I mean, I, I've, w the blooming dripping has always been how I knew that I was dialed in and eight grams was like the ideal. So if I got yeah. eight grams of dripping at the end of 30 seconds of blooming, I, I hit a good shot. Um, and you have to grind ultra fine to have a 30 second bloom with only eight grams, mm -hmm. uh, which then compensates for the fact that you're right, that you then have more trouble hitting pressure. Um, 
I, I like, and there's a whole bunch of things I like here. I like how you are graphing both pressure and flow at all times, um, which I don't do. And now that we have the limiter, I think that makes sense. Um, you're essentially bounding yeah. the, the shot at each, at each point. Yeah, so with this graph here, this is uh, fixed um, because I'm not changing those, those two steps. Um, so I've cheated a bit there, but you can see the duration is worked out. Um, so you can change the extraction ratio, I'll tell you exactly how long it's gonna, gonna go. But, um, and and those, those lines will vary. But um, you've, you've given me an idea there that we could have uh, some presets here. So we could have uh, light, really light beam, uh, medium beam and dark beam. For example, and, yeah, exactly. And that sets up, and, um, yeah. And then they then they tweak um, the the other thing, and I, I we kind of laughed about it on diaspora, but um, it does seem like um, the grinder being bimodal or unimodal has a massive impact on that pore stage, uh, and especially, I mean, the, the basic thing is that those unimodal uh, grinders tend to have pressure crashes during pour. Um, and need to be managed differently. Whereas lots more fines tends to keep the pressure up. Um, and I, I've, I've wondered whether I should actually have a little checkbox that's, I, the way I actually put it, is my grinder more than a thousand US or less than a thousand US dollars? <laughs> um, and, or, or, or you can just put 3000 US, it's the same thing. Um, and, and we know that all the grinders over 3000 US dollars are unimodal huge burrs and pretty much all the grinders under are going to be 64 mil flats or conical um, and and bimodal uh, so that those are the two variables and the thing i like about that is they were not really coffee questions it's like how much do you spend on your grinder and how dark is your bean and then it takes the best guess yeah uh, you wouldn't have to have obviously a unimodal bimodal here on this screen because the, the grinder doesn't change. Um, that could just be something they set far, far away. Um, I mean, this is really clean. You've obviously spent quite a lot of time on this. Um, and um, there's there's so much goodness here that I'll, I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah, it looks, it looks really great. Um, look, if, if I could just weigh in with, with one point, John, just on, on your idea about um, the slider from dark to light and the, you know, the, the idea about grinders and all of that, that that's, all, that's all great, but that has baked into it the idea that your goals and your taste preferences for those different roasts are what the end user wants to achieve. And I think there's, there's nothing wrong with going ahead and, and programming that. But what I, I really like about Damien's interface here is that it explains what the, what the goals are so that the user can work out what they want to do. So for example, if you had a user that um, was ordinarily bought darker beans and was gifted a, um, a, a roast that like uh, quite a light roast, they might nonetheless want to get more of that sort of chocolate out into it that um, Damien mentioned before. And so they might not want to use a preset high, uh, higher initial flow rate light roast setting that's geared towards getting less chocolate and, and more aroma in it. Um, and I think that, you know, if, if we've got Damien's explanations in there, then you can sort of have the best of, of both worlds. So going on the assumption, I mean, you're right though. I don't, I don't know how common a case that is. Um, just I'm, I'm working off the assumption that people who are dark roast people um, like chocolate and mouthfeel um, and, and people who are light roast tend to want clarity, fruit and origin um, and, and less mouthfeel then is how you accomplish that. I think by and large that that's the, that's the camp. Um, and the slightly complicating things is milk or no milk. Um, 
on the medium to dark world uh, because uh, I mean, my own feeling is that when people milk a medium light to dark roast, they don't like much acidity because acidity doesn't taste great in milk. But if they aren't milking those beans, they tend to want some acidity because otherwise it's kind of not interesting. It's a boring shot. Uh, so I tend to, if I'm making an espresso to drink neat and it's medium light to dark, I tend to go faster flow, decrease that body, get the TDS down, try and get some whiny flavors out of it. Um, whereas I wouldn't do that if I'm milking it. If I'm milking it, I'm going for a thicker, low acid, simple chocolate. Um, and then that, that, and that, the, you know, like Damien, I don't know how many check boxes you want. You know, is this being milked? Yes or no? Um, would, would also affect that. But I love the idea of having some, um, flavor describers like milk or no, um, and darkness of your bean and its clarity versus mouthfeel. And that sets a preset. And then we absolutely keep this, this bottom bar. But it, the nice thing about a slider versus presets is as you slide it, that char is going to morph. Right, it's gonna it's gonna be like a Terminator effect. You're gonna see all these lines move, uh, and that's gonna teach them by sliding it what variables are relevant as you adapt to a roast level. I, I, I it's just my two cents on this. I, I I love the the way the interface is designed, Damien, as well. I think I think it's very clear on on what you are changing. And the addition of the uh, descriptions is fantastic. And it, and it kind of reminds me of when, you know, when I used to work as a barista and, and I was introducing lighter roasts when they were, they were just uh, uh, used to drinking dark roasts. And without going into all the sensory side where, you know, you'd end up boring the guests half the time or that they've not got the time to, uh, to listen and really sort of understand what you're trying to say. Um, you, you would really simplify it in terms of, of, you know, do you like nuts or do you like fruit? And then from there, it's it's a process of, OK, you like nuts, so it's more on the darker side and and understanding their taste that way. And and I, can, I feel like that's kind of what Damien has done. He's identified, you know, what, what are the, the darker oaters looking for in terms of, you know, their drink, uh, you know, uh, uh, obviously the heavier chocolatey flavours. And, and I think with what John is saying in, in morphing the, the two graphs together, as long as we have those um, simplifying sort of flow questions where we're, we're trying to see where they're leading to with dark or light, I think it would work and they would naturally learn about the parameters um, with the definitions like as Damien has done um, by the side, because through my experience, a lot of people will change the taste of things to how they want it anyway. And it's, it's a case of finding the key components with which they find useful to change the profile within. So I think it's, it's, it's a very useful learning tool, but the slider just gives it that extra quickness that a lot of users may not want to invest the time in learning, learning everything it is, but it's more sort of clear cut. Okay, if you want it like this, the slider will go here. And this is what this profile has changed. So I think we're along the right lines and, and definitely the design and the descriptions is, is key to uh, getting to where the, the user would like. Um, but uh, it's, it's the sense of how simplified do we want to be on the, the terminology and descriptions to uh, how much they're willing to learn. What we want, I, what I feel what we should be aiming for is for new users. Somebody walks in, plugs in their machine um mm -hmm. they pull a shot if they get a nice coffee within two or three goes um they're gonna love the machine if it takes yeah. them two weeks to get something nice out of it it's uh it's very off-putting and that's that's the type of mentality i try and think of when i'm doing this and one of the ideas that john suggested there was um that I, I know with our local cafes we did a survey and um i think it was 82% of people drink uh, espresso with milk um, mm. in those cafes. So I think it's, it's safe to say that most people that are coming to um, the descent, um, there's going to be a high percentage that are going to drink milk. And 
maybe a preset, um, like the, the very first step is, uh, um, is a shot for a milk? Is it a milk drink? Is it an espresso drink? Um, or is it a, a long black? And you select those and they can be, they can set up your presets um, and, and you still have your descriptions that um, set. And so I've got a, a load of default button here and that just sets that back to this default. Um, and you would do the same thing with the buttons. So it just set defaults, give you give people a starting point for those drinks. Um, and then you just have a simple guide that um, yeah. if, if they want to move towards a certain preference they have, um, it, it describes a setting to, to move towards that sort of area. Fantastic. A lot of, a lot of um, the discussions, like you, three of us or the four of us here have been uh, describing the same thing. So if we look at the, the underlying things there, John's talking about um, faster flow rate. Now, I think we're all agreeing that faster flow rate for lighter beans is what people are generating to. So we can set that as a, as a guide. That's not something that's going to change regardless of your preference. Um, Indeed. Indeed. Um, but I, I'm actually using a lot of light beans and roasting some super light. And my preference is for it right on the, on the, the mark of light to medium. I'm on medium light, light sort of range is where I like to roast. But um, even with the light roast, I'm still extracting pretty slow. Um, and I was just showing some graphs there. Um, you can see here, this this is a really light bean. This is one of the facsimile beans. Um, and I grind it coarse, so I was only getting to four bar. And I'm drinking these shots in milk. I'm trying them as espresso, so I get to learn what they're like. Um, yeah. But ultimately, I want them in milk. Now, that shot was quite good in milk. Um, and, and that's a slow flow rate. And I'm starting to feel flow rate is more important, is a more important parameter than, than the pressure itself um, when you're profiling. Mm -hmm. um, anything that I want to give some, um, to the whole presence in milk, um, I generally go for this lower flow rate. Um, whereas if, I, if, if you're gonna drink it as espresso, you go for the, the faster flow rate. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to find, I'm not fully convinced, I'm starting to find that that's the case even with super light race. Um, right. You just, you just treat this infusion stage a bit different um, to what you want to do. But anyway, I think there's still a lot of experimenting there. Um, I haven't changed my profile much for years since I made the, the profile, it's the same as the Londinium. Um, yeah. I've had the same initial stage here and I just vary as far as, sometimes I'll change the pressure, but I, I pretty well stick to three bar. Um, yeah. Do you and, find and that's why for milk drinks, your pre-infusion may be a slightly higher than than for blacks or straight uh, uh, espresso shots? Yeah, so I don't drink black coffee. So I don't, it's hard for me to say that's nice. I know when a coffee tastes crap. Mm -hmm. um, with, if I drink espresso shot, um, and then five minutes later, I can taste it in the roof of my mouth. It's, it's astringent and it's crap yeah. and I don't like it. And most of the time it's the bean. It's not how I pull the shot. Um, and a lot of it, a lot of it comes from the bean. With how I pull the shot, a lot of it comes down to extraction ratio. Um, mm. these, even if I pull a shot that's gonna look like this where it's constant flow, constant pressure, um, and it's a light bean, um, it's, it's not gonna be horrible. Um, regardless of whether I did a six bar or nine bar, if it's a good bean, it's, it's not going to be horrible. It's going to taste slightly different. It's going to, um, you might get more clarity with, with that faster flow and lower pressure. Yes. Um, but it's not going to be horrible. But if you've got a bean that wasn't a good bean to start with, it's got a stringency, that's when you, you got to, you got to try and hide that astringency. And that's where the profiling comes in. Fascinating, uh, uh, Damien. This is awesome. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Damien. That was, uh, that was very informative, and I, I think everyone got to learn a whole lot. Uh, John actually had just to uh, run, I think, uh, for, yeah, just uh, left. And 
thanks everyone. I think our time, uh, if anyone wants to uh, or have a question, we're still happy to take a question. Otherwise, we can just wrap it up and uh, catch up next week. Yeah, cool. All right, it's been a fun one. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, guys. thanks a lot. Thanks, Damien and Luca and everyone. Thanks, Paul, as usual, and uh, John. Thanks, guys, and see you next week. See ya. Cheers.